All right, for the uh, free transform tool, what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of objects so you can see how it works. I'm going to create an ellipse. All right. Then I'm going to create a curve. And I'm going to make sure that this curve right here is only a stroke. So I'm going to switch my foreground and my stroke. And I'm going to select my stroke and increase the stroke so you can see it. And change it to black by clicking on the stroke, going to my swatches and selecting black. And then I'm going to do, I'm going to switch my fill to black and my stroke to nothing or none. And I'm going to select the text. Okay. As you can see, if I select something, for example, the ellipse, and I click on the free transform tool, the shortcut is the letter E. I get this rectangle around the object. I get this little window that pops open. Okay, if you don't know what each object is, just move your mouse, wait two seconds, and the first one is constrain. Then I have free transform. Then I have perspective distort and free distort. I'm going to just select the free transform. And when I move my cursor on top of the corner, I get these curve double head arrow, and then I get a diagonal arrow. When I move it outside of my rectangle, I get the curved double head arrow. This means that I can rotate my object. Okay. The same thing for when I select the curve and I go to free transform, I get icons on the corners and I can rotate my curve. And the same thing for my text. can transform. Now when I go to free transform and I go to the middle anchor points for the top, the bottom, left side and right side, I get this icon that has a horizontal double head arrow and a vertical double head arrow. When I go to the anchor point and I move it, and remember, this is not the anchor point to the path, but the anchor point to the free tool. I can go up and down, so scale vertically. I can scale one side horizontally. Same thing for the bottom and the right hand side. And I can also go left and right by clicking on the anchor point and shearing to the left and to the right. To constrain my shearing, all I have to do is hold the shift key. So now I can move left and right, but not up and down. Okay, and once you're done moving your free transform, select the selection tool. The shortcut is V. And I can click on the gray area and select another object. Shortcut E for free transform. And again, I can go to these middle points and do a shear, constrain it with the shift key. I can go to the sides and do the same thing, shear it. And if I hold the Alt key, I can mirror shear one side with the other side. Same thing for the text tool. Now the other thing that I can do with the free transform is that I can scale my object. So I can go to one of the corners and enlarge my object. Hit V and then click on the gray area. I can do that with my curve. E for free transform tool. can shrink it larger. And if I select the direct selection tool and select a specific area of my curve or a specific set of anchor points 
on one of my shapes, like for example these two right here, if I hit E, I can transform only the area that is controlled by those, those two anchor points. I can rotate them. I can move my mouse in the middle of my free transform and move my selection. Hit A again and I can do that on a curve. If I select these two anchor points and go E, I can shrink them. I can rotate them. But not on the text because the text is treated as one single object. So by using the free transform tool we have eliminated the rotate tool and the reflect tool and we've eliminated using the scale tool, the shear tool and the reshape tool because on the free transform we have those two tools combined in there. So if I hit A hit E for free transform I can use the perspective distort to move this direction or this direction eliminating the shear tool and what I can do also if I right mouse button click inside of my free transform selection, I can go to transform, reflect, and I can select to reflect on a horizontal or a vertical axis or a specific angle. When you select horizontal and vertical, pay attention to where the axis of the reflection will be. So if I select vertical, it's going to flip it using an axis in the middle of my selection like this. If I go to transform, reflect and reflect it on the horizontal axis it will take the middle of the object and flip it right there.